Well hello Internet! Previously I made a big giant tutorial on both MySQL and PHP and I received a lot of requests asking how to connect those two. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to take the student database that we created in the MySQL tutorial and I'm going to make it work on the web using PHP. And of course in the description underneath the video I have links to the MySQL and PHP tutorials that I previously made. But what we're going to focus in on here is setting privileges for database users, setting up outside files to get access to the database connections that we're going to need, prepare statements and a whole bunch of other different things so I have a lot to do so let's get into it. Okay so this is basically what we're going to create. I kept everything extremely simple. We're going to have one page that's going to allow us to enter in student information and it's going to be the same student information that we had set up in the MySQL database tutorial and then whenever you click on send that information is going to be sent to our database and we're also going to create another page that's going to print out this table with a listing of all of our student information and I'm hoping that by showing you this you'll be able to basically do anything with MySQL and PHP and, and I kept everything really condensed into just a couple videos. Now I'm over in the terminal inside of MySQL. One thing we're going to want to do also to keep everything really nice and secure is the user that is going to be accessing the database for us. We want to really limit the power they have. So what you're going to want to do is log into MySQL as root or as a user that has enough power to grant the capabilities of your different users. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the user that is going to be able to access my database from the web very limited privileges. So I'm going to allow them to insert new information, select new information, delete information from the database, and update. Now you might decide that you want to remove the privilege for them to be able to delete existing rows and that would be very secure and in that case you would just use select insert and update but I'm just going to leave everything the way that it is here. Then what we would do is we would define the specific database we're going to use which is test3 and dot star and then after that you're going to say 2 and this is going to be the user that you're going to want to use for your website and I'm going to call it student web and in this situation I am using local host so I'm going to type in localhost like that and then you're going to type in identified by and there's where you're going to type in their password so I just put turtle dove inside of there and there it is so when you execute this this is going to give the user that you're going to use in your website only the ability to insert select delete and update the database now what we're going to do is we're going to define MySQL iConnect.php, get student information, add student, and student added. This is all the files right here and of course I have a link to them in the description as well. However, it's very important to put the file that's going to access your database outside of the main part of your website so that nobody can access it. So in this situation on my local host, I have all of my website files and everything here that can be accessed on my machine in my documents folder. So I want to put MySQL I underscore connect, or you can name this anything you want, but I just named it that. You're going to want to put this outside of that main web documents folder, and that's going to keep everything out of the way and also make it very hard for people to access this information. So now let's jump in and write the code for this. It's actually going to be pretty simple. We're going to define some constants. So we're just going to say define and we're going to get database user and you know who that is because we just went and created him and that's going to be student web and I'm keeping this as simple as I can possibly make it. Then you're going to want to type in the password for that user and you just saw that it's turtle dove. You're also going to come in and define the host in this situation. It's going to be localhost and then finally the database name which is going to be test3. Now what we want to do is actually get a database connection with this guy and we're going to put an at symbol here which is going to keep any errors from showing in the browser. And you're going to type in mysqli connect and then you're going to put in all of the constants that you defined. So database host, database user, database password and then finally database name. And I'm also going to come in here and call die which is going to be called if we can't get this connection and I'm just going to say something like uh, could not connect to my SQL and then you could do something like print out the error that occurred my SQLI connect error and there you go and that is literally all you're going to have to do to get a connection with your database. So now what I'm going to do is jump over into get student info.php and create everything here. Now to get that connection that we defined outside of our main root area for our website, you're going to go require once. And to jump backwards, you're going to go dot dot forward slash to get into the different directory. And then you're going to type in mysqli connect.php. 
and that's going to get you that. Now we need to create our query. And what this guy's going to do is show this table right here. So I just have to create a query that's going to get me the names and email addresses and all the information you see right here. So to find the query, and you're going to just type in your MySQL command. So I want my first name, I want my last name, my email, my street, my city, jump down to the next line, my state, my zip, my phone number, my birth date. I'm getting a whole bunch of things here just so you can see what a big crazy query looks like. And I want it from the students table. Now I need to get a response, which is going to be all the information that I'm going to want to show in my table. And again, I'm going to put the at sign here so that nothing shows up inside of the browser. I'm going to pass DBC, which is my database connection. This guy right here. There we are. And then I need to also pass in the query I want to make on the database. Now before I continue, I want to make sure that the query executed properly. So I'm just going to have to go if response like that. And then I need to create a table to put all this information into. So table align, let's say I want to align left. This is just basic HTML. And let's say I want cell spacing equal to five and cell padding equal to eight. I know this should be done CSS and all this stuff. I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm just basically just getting this to work as, po as simple as possible. And then I'm going to have to go in here and define each of the rows for my tables. Let's say I want them all to be bold, first name, and then close that off. And I'm going to do that for every single one of these guys and then put a closing quote for the echo command right there. So this is just going to represent the top of the table, these guys right here. So that's what I'm making right there. Now I need to do the rest. Now to do the rest, what I'm going to have to do is cycle through all the different rows and then display them properly in the table. So I'm going to use a while loop here, give myself some more room, and I'm going to get each of these rows and I'm going to be able to get them by calling my SQLI fetch array. And this is going to return one row of data over and over and over again until there is no more data left to return. And I'm going to get that from the response. And then to define each one of these rows, Find the row TR and then TD and let's just say align left again, close that off. And then to get the row of data, I just go row and then I give it the name of that row in MySQL, which is first name. And then I close that off, close that row and then let's make this align left as well and then close that off and make sure we put our quotes in here. And we only need one period. And then of course we're going to do that for every single piece of information that is in that row that has been returned because of the SQL command that I issued right here. Come back down here again. And then after I'm all done, we can just come in here and close off everything all together. Another echo statement. And then jump outside of this and we'll go echo and close the whole entire table as well. And then I just need to basically define what's going to happen if my conditional up here, there was no response or there was some type of an error. In that situation, I'll go echo and say something like couldn't issue database query or something like that. And then I could also come in here and go echo MySQLI error, pass in the database connection to get that error, close that off, and then finally close the connection to the database altogether. So MySQLI close and then pass in the database connection. And then get rid of that last curly brace. And there we are. That is all we're going to need to do to print out that table with all of that user information. Just pass in this query. Now let's jump over into addstudent.php. And this is just going to require or allow them to enter the information and to pass the information from HTML over into MySQL. I'm going to show you how to do this a couple different ways. I'm just going to put the location for the PHP script that is going to be receiving all this information. And I'm just going to go student added.php and then method. In this situation, I'm going to use post. And then inside of here, we could do something like putting in bold, add a new student. And then we'll just have to ask for all of the different information that we want. So if we want the first name, and then we're going to type in the input that's going to allow them to put that information in and it's going to be text and let's give it a name because that's important because if it doesn't have a name we're not going to be able to figure it out inside of our PHP script and just to keep everything simple let's just make everything 30 and if we want to give it a value of nothing and then close that off and there we go now all we need to do is do this for every single other possible input type and make sure we close this off
Okay, so I put that information in there for all of the other different inputs. So we got first name, last name, and all these different things. The only thing I did here is for the state, I only want two characters, so I made the max length two. Zip code, I only want five characters, so I made the max length five right there. I'm just doing this to speed up everything. So you can see there all of the information that I want the user to enter in. And now what I need to do is define the submit button. So let's put this inside of paragraph tags just to keep it simple again. And then inside of here, we can do input type is equal to, and this is gonna be submit. Make sure you give it a name because we need to check that this has been submitted. So I'm gonna give it the name submit. You're gonna see in a second why. And then if I just wanna put send in there as the value, that's fine. And everything else is finished. Okay, so there you go. That is all we're gonna to need to do HTML wise to be able to get the information and send it to the PHP script student added, which we're gonna create right now. Okay, so here we are again. Very first thing we're gonna do is check that this page was actually reached whenever this form was submitted. So now, remember I said, make sure you give submit a name. Well, right here we're gonna go and check to make sure that it actually sent us here. So post and submit. You're gonna type in the name that you gave your submit button. Okay, so if we did come from that form, what we wanna do is we wanna verify that all of the information that we asked them to pass to us was actually created or was passed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an array and this array is going to store any missing data and you're gonna see here in a second what that's gonna look like. So we're gonna check and of course for to make this really secure you need to use regular expressions to go in and verify all the information before you allow it to go into the database but just to keep things a little bit more simple I'm going to avoid going into regular expressions right now. So I just go first name and if we jump over here, this is what I'm doing. I'm looking for this right here and I'm getting the value that was entered inside of this. So I'm gonna go first name, check if it's empty or if they gave me the information I need. If it's empty, I'm going to store inside of data missing the array. And this is really weird inside of PHP if you wanna add an additional thing to an array, you just keep adding it, okay, right like that. And of course, make sure we put an equal sign inside of there. Else, if it was not empty and they did pass in a first name, we're gonna store that, maybe give it a little bit shorter name here. And we're gonna trim off any white space that exists. And to get access to that again, underscore post, and that's gonna give us access to that data that was passed from the form. And there we go. Now all we need to do is do that for all the other possible inputs from the previous page. And there you can see I did. First name, last name, email, street, everything. Everything is exactly the same. And I went and pulled it in, trimmed off the white space. If there was no information, I stuck that in an array, da 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 da. Okay, so after we have all of our information we're gonna need submitted, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna check that all of our information was actually passed. And if you wanna check to see if an array is empty or not, you just call empty and then you pass in the array, data missing. And if it is empty, that means no errors and all the information was actually passed in. So then we're gonna go require once again. And then we have to locate the file that's gonna have our database connection in it. MySQLI connect is what I called mine. And then here I'm gonna use what's called a prepared statement. So for this query, I'm gonna go query. And since I'm gonna be inserting information, I want this to be a little bit more secure. Like I said, this isn't as secure as it could be, but don't wanna get into all that. Then what I'm gonna do is just list out all of the different pieces of information I want to enter into my database. Email, street, city, state, zip code, phone number, birth date, sex, and date entered, lunch cost, and student ID. And then after that, you're gonna say values, and you need to put a question mark or the actual information you want passed in thereafter. So we're gonna have MySQL actually put all this information together for us, or PHP. So a question mark for every single one of these. And then in the situation where I have date entered, I'm actually gonna want now inside of there so that it gets the updated date. So there that is. And then for lunch cost, I'm gonna put another question mark inside of there. And then finally, I'm gonna put null in there for the student ID so that it auto creates that for me. There you go, there's my insert statement. Now I'm going to have the statement prepared for me. And to do that, MySQLI, prepare, and you pass in the database connection and the query. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in the actual information that is going to represent or replace these question marks. And to do that, we need to bind the variables to those question marks. And to do that, we have to go MySQLI, 
statement bind parameters then we're going to put in our statement right like that and then what we need to do is something a little weird let me just come in here you're going to have to represent the data type for every one of these guys that you're going to be passing into your database and you're going to use an i for integers you're going to use a d for doubles you're going to use a b for blobs and you're going to use an s for everything else. Well, you're going to use a lowercase s, and you're also going to be using a lowercase b, okay? So this is everything else. And you're going to be doing that right here. So what I need to do? Might actually be easier to go into MySQL, and if we do describe students like this, well, you're going to see, shrink this down, all of the data types for each one of these different things in our database. So this is a string, 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 character is a string, int, another string, everything else, date, this is a string, enum string, timestamp string, this is going to be a float, and this is another int. So knowing that information, we're going to come over here, and we're going to go string, 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 there's six of them, then there was an integer, then there's three more strings, and a day, okay? Now what we need to do is put in all of our data. So the very first thing, or the variables that we want bound to these question marks for our prepared statement. So first name is going to be the very first one. That's the question mark, and there that is. And we need to put the variable we want to send in there. Next one's going to be last name, email, street, city, state, zip, phone, birth date. Make sure it's the right variable name. Sex of our student and lunch. And that's going to bind all of that data in those variables to the question marks up here for our prepared statement. Now to execute our query, MySQLI, statement, execute, and then pass in the statement we want to execute. And then I'm going to get the number of affected rows since we're only going to be updating one at a time. This number should always come back one if it actually executed properly. There's some security things you could do here as well. Statement, affected rows and pass in the statement there. Then we're going to check to make sure that the affected rows actually were one. Affected rows equal to one. If they were, that means the query went through properly. Maybe we want to say something like echo student entered. Then we don't want to close our statement. MySQLI statement. Close and pass in the statement. And then we can go MySQLI close our database connection that we have. And then else, if the affected rows were not one, something went wrong, say something like error occurred, and then if we would want to put in the actual error that did occur, just go echo MySQLI error, put that on the screen if we'd like, and then we're going to have to close our statement as well as close our database connection again, just like that. Then we have our next else, which is what happens if the data was missing and they didn't pass in the data that we wanted. Well, we'll go else, echo, you need to enter the following data. And then if we want to cycle through all the different pieces of data that they did not enter, we're going to go data missing, which is the name for our array that we created that we added all this information to. So come up here, say data missing, there's the array, and this is all the information that would have been missed if it was not entered for each data missing. We're going to tape each little piece of the array or each thing stored in the array, temporarily store it in missing. That's what for each does for us. And then we'll echo those out on the screen and we'll just go missing and then say we want to put a break or something in there. And then let's say since they didn't enter that information, they're probably going to want to enter the student information again. How do you do that inside of a PHP script? We can actually have a PHP script call itself and there's no reason to type all that out. I'm just going to jump over here, jump over into the form area, select this. Even though this is student added, we can take this information right here from the top of the form to the bottom of the form. That's what we copied right there. And this is from addstudent.php. Jump back over here. And then outside of the PHP script, which ends right here, jump down there and paste all that in. File save it. Get studentinfo.php. Works perfectly. Then we can go to studentadded.php. Type in some information about a student. Hit send. You can see student entered popped up right here. So we can come in here and go get student info and now you can see John Smith shows up down there. So pretty cool to be able to go in there get information out of our database as well as add new information and I think I've provided enough information to also allow you to go in there and basically add anything else you need. Please leave your questions and comments below otherwise till next time.